name is Skull Electric here. Today is Sunday, February 9th, 2025, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. IANA, the EV charging network backed by eight automakers, has officially transitioned from public beta to full-scale national release. During their testing phase, the network completed over 4,400 charging sessions with over 80 vehicle models, dispensing nearly 63,000 kilowatt hours of energy. They have deployed Alpatronic hardware, which delivers up to 400 kilowatts, with each dispenser able to charge two cars simultaneously at rates up to 200 kilowatts per vehicle. This week, new rechargeries opened in Houston, Texas, and Abilene, Kansas, with Wilcox, Arizona among seven additional sites under construction. As we reported earlier in 2024, the IANA network has contracted over 100 sites nationwide, with plans to deploy more than 1,000 charging bays by the end of 2025. Within the next several weeks, the Garner, North Carolina rechargery will open one of Amazon's Just Walk Out convenience stores, which utilizes computer vision-powered AI to enable 24-7 grab-and-go purchases. As a reminder, the IANA locations offer both CCS and NACS connectors, and their stated long-term goal is 30,000 fast charging points by 2030. Mercedes-Benz has confirmed that its electric vehicles in the U.S. can now use more than 20,000 dispensers on Tesla's supercharging network. Compatible locations are now visible within the vehicle's navigation and the Mercedes Me Charge network, now offering over 140,000 charging points in North America. For now, all Mercedes-Benz EVs in North America are equipped with native CCS charging ports. A NACS adapter is available for purchase through Mercedes-Benz dealerships for $185. Some Mercedes-Benz models will also need a software update at a service center in order to activate automatic payment and charging initiation with plug and charge at compatible dispensers. In late 2025, Mercedes will begin equipping its new EVs with native NACS ports, starting with their CLA EV, which is expected to be unveiled within the next few months. Access to superchargers across the country, along with Mercedes' investments in charging for their own network, plus their participation in the IANA partnership, have made owning a Mercedes EV more appealing. I have seen many great deals across the country for a wide range of models including the EQS, EQE SUV, and EQB, often driven less than 30,000 miles. As we've pointed out before, depreciation in EVs is calculated based on longevity standards which align with gas-powered vehicle lifespans. When compounded by typical luxury depreciation, used Mercedes EVs are almost absurdly affordable. The brand is also aggressively pricing new 2025 models, including up to $15,000 in the form of a manufacturer cash rebate called the Mercedes Incentive Bonus. That is set to run until the end of the month. Have you seen any screaming deals on EVs? Let me know in the comments. While we're on the topic of deals and charging, Tesla has discontinued free supercharging for Foundation Series Cybertrucks, but they've added it to new Model X purchases. The supercharging perk is tied to a Tesla account and does not transfer if the vehicle is sold. As always, the perk may not be used for commercial purposes like taxi services, ride sharing, or delivery. They say there is no such thing as a free lunch. Tesla did raise the base price of the Model X by $5,000 in the USA. The price increase also bumps the MSRP over $80,000, which disqualifies Model X buyers from receiving the $7,500 federal EV tax incentive. We have a 2016 Model S, which has unlimited supercharging, and the majority of our 100,000 miles we've traveled have been free. Back then, the perk was transferable. If we ever sell it, the new owner will enjoy the perk. Are any of you viewers EV road trippers who rely on a free public fast charging perk? How does it change your driving and traveling habits? Toyota, the world's largest automaker, has officially opened its first U.S.-based EV battery plant in North Carolina. The $14 billion facility, creatively titled Toyota Battery Manufacturing North Carolina is set to begin shipping batteries for Toyota's electrified vehicles in April. The company says the 7 million square foot plant will begin production utilizing 100% renewable energy and aims to produce up to 30 gigawatt hours of batteries annually when at full capacity. 
The first batteries from this factory are expected to be assembled at Toyota's Kentucky plant, where they will eventually integrate them into the upcoming three-row all-electric SUV, which is expected to launch next year. This week, the Japanese company also announced plans for a manufacturing facility in Shanghai, China, specifically for its luxury brand Lexus. The new facility will produce electric vehicles and batteries aiming to start operations by 2027 with an initial capacity of 100,000 units per year. This plant will be Toyota's first independent factory in China, following in the footsteps of Tesla, which established its Shanghai Gigafactory as the first wholly foreign-owned automotive plant in the country. The Lexus plant in China is expected to create approximately 1,000 jobs in its startup phase. The decision to establish a wholly owned company for Lexus EVs in China comes at a time when Toyota is losing ground there. In 2024, their sales declined 9% in China, where most foreign automakers have fallen behind in terms of technology, performance, price, and public favor. Early last year, we reported on Toyota's plans to roll out 30 all-electric models globally by 2030. Meeting that objective will require many new factories all over the world. Do you think Toyota has a path to competing with the Chinese EV makers and Tesla through the electric transition? Just a couple of weeks ago, we reported that Ford Motor Company's sales had increased for all three of their fully electric models year over year. During their earnings call this week, their Model E division reported a $5.1 billion deficit in 2024. That marks a slide of about $400 million compared to their 2023 loss of $4.7 billion. Ford's CEO Jim Farley acknowledged the difficulties but expressed optimism about the future of Ford's EV business. We are making changes in our EV business, he stated during the earnings call emphasizing that the company's next generation of EVs is expected to be profitable. The company attributed the losses to industry pricing pressure as well as capital investment pouring into battery plants and next generation product development. He noted that while the current models, including the F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E, have incurred significant losses, Ford continues to reduce costs and improve quality. This week, Ford was granted an extension by the state of Michigan for its battery plant located near the town of Marshall. There, they had originally planned to manufacture cells licensed by Chinese battery giant CATL. Ford now has an extra year to meet its investment and job creation commitments at that facility. This location is part of the Blue Oval Battery Park, Michigan, originally a $3.5 billion project. It has since been scaled back to $2.5 to $3 billion, with Ford citing slower than anticipated EV demand as the cause. Production at the plant is set for 2026 and is expected to create around 1,700 jobs, scaled back from the initial projection of 2,500 jobs. The revised incentive package from the state of Michigan now is valued between approximately $384 million and $409 million, down from almost $1.035 billion, including tax breaks. Ford also appointed Andrew Frick as the new president of the Model E division. He had been in charge of the Ford Blue internal combustion engine division and will continue to oversee both business units. Jim Farley said their strategy includes a pivot towards hybrid vehicles, including e-revs, or extended range electric vehicles, which has become a popular choice amongst other automakers over the last few years. Ford has introduced several smaller EVs in Europe in collaboration with Volkswagen using the German automaker's MEB platform. During the earnings call, Ford reiterated that it will be two more years until their next generation EV products are available, starting with the all-electric midsize pickup truck known as T3. Can Ford compete in the EV space over the next two years with no new products? Do they need to? Recently, we visited the manufacturing site of Electric Outdoors, a company which produces off-grid power stations designed to enable hospitality at remote locations. Their solar-powered canopy product houses at least 150 kilowatt hours of energy and even produces its own water supply. With a bathroom, kitchenette, bed, and Wi-Fi, the units unlock remote land without permits quickly. We published a detailed exploration of the company and product with its founder over at our Misco Electric Industry channel. You can click here or see a link in the video's description to watch. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. 
We hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel if you find value in our coverage. In order to continue to produce this show, we have to see subscriber growth, so we hope you'll share this episode online. Thank you for watching and have a great week. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.